for those that don't quite understand how purization and nutrition works, what can be the benefit for adopting um, purization throughout, you know, your different phases of off-season, pre-season and, uh, and season? Yeah, and I guess, you know, that, that um, example I gave around changing carb intake around training is an example of periodization where essentially you're adapting what you're eating around the different phases and that can be macro, um, so times of season or micro, so training sessions. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess the real benefit of that is making sure that, you know, you're, you're fueling appropriately, you're recovering adequately and you're getting the changes that you're after in body composition. Um, whether that be increasing mass or reducing fat mass. And so actually doing that at different phases and, and changing that energy and macronutrient intake can really help with those goals. Do you have recipes on your website or are there some sort of things that people can follow, whether it be smoothies? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I do. Um, and then, I, you know, we, we post, post regularly um, on social media platforms as well around some recipes too. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm happy to even, you know, if, guess if it helps to share some with you, happy to do that as well um, if anyone's interested. So yeah, but the recipe, the, the food um, the, like planning and prepping is just crucial. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, if you're really eager to, to um, make changes and to improve performance, you have to know what you're going to eat around your training sessions coming up and not just think about it the hour before. Um, and I really think that's how, you know, you can make a big difference is, is just really the same way you'd have your training plans, you have your nutrition planned around that. What would be some pretty common things that you see in footballers, uh, certainly developing footballers as well? Yeah, um, again, great question. I mean, a lot of developing footballers, um, one of the things that, that they, like I say, our draftees, uh, is that we need to get a fair bit of lean mass on them. So yep. those first couple of years is a, is a real focus on gaining that lean mass. And, and for some people, some players that come in, it's around actually needing to gain the size and the mass. Others, they may have the mass that we just need to lean it up a little bit. So there's a couple of different sort of situations. But the key principle is that we always say you need consistent protein and of high quality. And the one thing I see in, you know, young footballers, um, is that, you know, they might have some wheat bix for breakfast and a sandwich for lunch with some, you know, muesli bars and fruit in between. Um, and the real hit of protein doesn't come in until dinner. Were there people that helped you get there? Were there some strong mentors? Uh, who were some strong influence of your, your career to get to this point? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, and so that, that um, uh, dietitian in Adelaide, I guess, really first introduced me to sports nutrition and opened up opportunities for me was a huge um, influence in my life. So um, is he, is he still Anthony Mead um, yeah, from uh, South Australia. Yeah. Um, he doesn't consult heaps in sports anymore, but he was one of the leaders in that space. Um, so he cool. was, yeah, yeah, really, really crucial for me. Um, I guess one of my um, old lecturers um, that influenced me um, to actually start my PhD. I think my PhD, doing a PhD is what really opened all the doors for me. And it was, it's a point of difference. More and more people are now doing PhDs, but there's not heaps of, of sports dietitians that are PhD qualified. Um, and I think that that really opened up opportunities within high performance sport to sort of stand out a little bit and to be able to offer something a little bit different from the research sort of evidence based perspective. Should I be eating at quarter time, half time or three quarter time? And if so, what? Yeah, awesome question, Lika. So um, in short, yes, we should be eating something over again to make sure that those energy levels are maintained. Um, and the key there is to get the sugar levels up. So we don't want anything that's going to take a long time to digest. It should be uh, a simple carbohydrate. Now, that can be anything from, you know, some, some fruit um, is a good option. Um, you might see athletes having lollies at that time, energy gels at that time. Um, you know, dried fruit can be good too. Uh, fruit drinking, fruit juice or Gatorade. So you don't need a lot, but having something small, um, you know, either, you know, especially half time. Um, potentially as a small, you know, carbohydrate drink at, at the quarter time break 
will just make sure that you maintain those um, energy levels throughout the game. Is there a window before and after a game or training to eat without feeling sick? Yeah, so um, feeling sick is a, is a common um, issue that a lot of athletes have. And it can be a combination of, um, you know, the digestion that might be a little bit slower um, when nerves are involved, but nerves really um, tend to be the main thing that can cause this. So we have to think before a game, um, you really want a good two or three hours to eat your last main meals. It can be digested in time to actually have as energy. So you don't need to eat that close to a game, something that's substantial. You know, three hours before getting in your last main meal and then popping up with something that isn't too heavy so it won't make you feel sick. And there are a lot of players that I work with that, you know, can feel quite nauseous on game day and whatnot. They might just get it more from their liquid-based foods, so to speak.